Here we are back in Adobe Photoshop looking at the layout that was put together, a composition for a website. Obviously, the website cannot just exist as a Photoshop file. We need to prepare it using HTML. And eventually, we will be moving into Dreamweaver and assembling this exact layout. But before we do that, we need to determine from this layout what are the things that need to come into Dreamweaver as graphic images, GIFs, PNGs, JPEGs, and what are the items that we can hold off on and type in to Dreamweaver and style using a cascading style sheet or CSS. So I'm going to just take a moment and look at the content that we have here. Several images, those are very clear cut. We will slice those, save those, bring those in. Uh, we have a logo at the bottom that will come in as a graphic. The main logo, Sugar Record Studios, although it is typography and we may be able to match it somewhat color-wise, it's probably, if it, if it really indeed is a logo, has been tightly kerned. Maybe the letter forms have been altered somewhat. I don't want to take a chance and alter the brand image, the identity of that company. So we're going to bring that in as a graphic as well. The other oddity that we may not be able to match exactly using HTML and CSS is this little star, the asterisk, the bullet on the bullet points. So those are the main pieces of this layout that we will bring in as graphics. Everything else we will be able to type in to Dreamweaver and style and make look exactly as we see here once we get into Dreamweaver using CSS. So I'm at the point where I can start slicing. The slicing tool uh, regardless of which version of Photoshop you're using, is embedded in the suite of tools with the cropping tool. I believe on earlier versions, the cropping tool may be down a little bit lower, but just look for your cropping tool. And, um, all right, so having some issues not wanting to release the cropping tool. Here we go. So in the cropping tool, slice tool, that's what I'm after. So we've already determined that I'm going to slice this header image. I'm going to zoom up a little bit into my layout so I can be accurate. I will select the male singer, the female singer. Now you can see as you're making slices in Photoshop that a grid is developing and, and each piece that you have sliced now has a number and we'll talk about that more in just a second. The other pieces that I know that I need the ALIS logo. Now just a note about this logo part of the logo is this orange rectangle but because we're working in Photoshop this is a very pixelated very um, kind of shaky way to bring in a rectangle. So I'm actually just slicing the headphones and the ALIS and I'm going to wait until we get into Dreamweaver to add the rectangle using CSS. And we'll move up to the top and grab this one by slicing a box around it. And then the other, I only need one of these, but I want to make sure that I'm zoomed up enough to, to slice an entire asterisk. So those are the graphic pieces that I need. Now, as we mentioned just a second ago, when you're slicing, Photoshop is numbering these for you. So I have a two, a four. Those names are not going to be very meaningful to you if you were to see those on a list. I'm going to switch over to the Slice Select tool and I can double click on these slices one by one and what that does is it brings up the Slice Options panel. Um, lots of things you can do in here but the only thing I'm worried about right now is changing the name. You can see that if I were to have saved this as a GIF or a JPEG 
the name of this would be sugar record underscore o four dot gif. Not very helpful in determining what that graphic is. So I am going to change the name sugar record logo. That seems to make a little more sense in describing this image. The banner, double click, banner, that works for me. I'm going to move around my layout, double click, mail, singer, female, singer, ALIS, asterisk, I will call that bullet, just to make it easier. All right, so I have sliced up all of the images that I know need to come into Dreamweaver as images. So at this point, I can move to File, Save for Web. Each one of these images, the advantage of slicing is that I can apply a different setting, a different color setting. Some of these may be GIFs, some of them may be JPEGs. So some of the easier ones, this girl and boy singer, and I'm actually going to hold down my shift key and do them both at the same time since they really are similar in um, style of photo and color palette. Anything that's all photographic should really be saved as a JPEG. It's the best compression method for photos. So JPEG. These photos are not that significant in my layout, so I'm going to drop the quality back to medium for those. In contrast, the logo is all typography, lots of flat color. The best compression method in that scenario would be a GIF and I clearly do not have a very immense color palette so once I have GIF chosen I can back off the number of colors I'm gonna to go to uh, 16 you know you might even be able to get away with 8 or something in between and the ALIS has even fewer colors so I definitely do not need to indicate 256 I will also choose 8 for that and I may need to enlarge my selection area so that I can grab the asterisk. Again, I do not need that full range of colors. I will drop down to eight. Let me zoom out just a moment. So we're left with a decision about this banner. And often you will experience a graphic that could be a JPEG. There's some photographic continuous tone qualities in here, yet there's a lot of flat color that would qualify it maybe to look better as a GIF. In those cases, what I will typically do is try both. Here is the image selected. It is a GIF. Right now it's, it has full range of color, 256. Let's just drop back to 128. The graphic is 36.8K, so pretty, pretty large. If I switch over to a JPEG, and again, probably not very high, maybe high, I'm at 24. And to the naked eye, the graphic really looks fine. So I'm going to stick with this high quality JPEG. So I have all of my graphics. They all have different file formats attached to them. So I'm ready to save. In the previous movie, I had created a directory, a folder on my desktop called Sugar Record. The tracing image, the Sugar Record GIF, is already there waiting. Now what's a little bit confusing is our file, our initial Photoshop document was called Sugar Record. And when I double click and renamed all of those images, none of those files were named Sugar Record. I had logo, girl, etc. Don't worry about this. Try to ignore this part. That's I know that's um, 
It's right here. It's, it's hard to ignore. But you have to trust that the names that you did give the files will be the names that are attached to those files. What I need to concentrate on not only is where the files are going to be saved, but the type of information that we're saving them as. So images only, absolutely. I don't need anything else. I'll leave the default settings. But remember back, we talked about Photoshop creating these this grid of slices. I don't need anything else other than the slices that I created, that I selected. So it's important that you choose slices. I don't want all the slices. I just want the ones that I made, the user slices. I'm the user. I'm the one that sliced them in. I'm going to save and it should just take a few seconds. And just to confirm that I have everything before I move on, I'm going to hop out to my finder, look at my desktop. My desktop's kind of a mess right now. Go into my sugar record directory. And what happens is Photoshop creates a, a secondary file for you called images. And in images are all of the, you know, here's my sugar record logo, the two singers, the bullet, the banner, the ALIS logo. So at this point, I have all the images that I need, and I'm ready to move forward into Dreamweaver.